Hello and welcome to the news bulletin on Goa 365 with me, Marsh D'Souza. Warren Alimau, the 22-year-old nephew of the PWD Minister Churchill Alimau, on Tuesday made an appearance at the Kalangut police station in connection with the rape charges levelled against him by the German lady alleging that he had sexually exploited her minor daughter. Warren, who was at the Kalangut police station at around 3.45, was accompanied by his advocate Mike Mehta and was questioned by police inspector Tushar Wernicker for more than an hour and a half. On the advice of his counsel advocate Mike Mehta, Warren did not address the media after his meeting with the Kalangut police. Addressing the media, advocate Mehta said that Goa had become safe for criminals but unsafe for innocent people. That Goa has become very safe for criminals and unsafe for innocent people. He also said that his client was being victimized but had cooperated with the police in the investigation. The statement of my carpenter is doing plumber's job and plumber's doing carpenter job. I'm referring to a statement made my client has cooperated with the police. He was given a summons two, two days before. He could have sought anticipatory bail. He has not sought. I would advise him not to seek. But though there is no necessity who has not been associated or committed any crime. Speaking further, Advocate Mehta said that the ongoing case was a bundle of confusion and wondered if his orphan client would be compensated for the torment he was undergoing if found innocent. If the man is totally innocent and he's going through this trauma, who is going to compensate him tomorrow? People making bombastic statements and they make statements and they feel they know anything and everything. The Directorate of Panchayats on Wednesday submitted to the government a detailed report on the mega projects in the state. Three months after it was given the task of compiling a report on the disputes related to mega projects in the 11 talukas of the state during the last one year. Goa 365 senior reporter Murari Shetty has this exclusive statement from the director of Panchayats, Menino D'Souza. So I was given a direction that is the director of Panchayats to compile all this projects wherever objections have been raised by all the public and put up to them so that whatever decision uh, in the light of the legal provision well, can be taken and uh, if the complaints can be assessed what are the complaints and if they can be settled at that level so that also they will be decided. So it took me some time to compile it because initially whatever report I had got not complete. So by today actually I have got it I will be uh, sending it to the government. It may be recalled that the Directorate of Panchayat had been asked to prepare the said report following stiff opposition from the villagers across the state against mega-projects in their villages. The Chief Minister Dikambar Kamath had formulated an all-party committee to look into the issue of mega-projects in the state following a discussion on the same during the monsoon session of the State Legislative Assembly in August 2008. It may also be recalled that the Chief Minister had assured the committee members that the said report would be submitted to the committee by the 30th September 2008. Exasperated with the intolerable stink, the staff of the Life Insurance Corporation of India at Pato Plaza in Panjim stopped a garbage truck of the Corporation of the City of Panjim on Tuesday from dumping what it was presumed to be garbage at a site in Pato. It may be recalled that the employees of the LIC as well as other government and non-government offices situated at Pato Plaza had earlier protested against the CCP's waste management program in the vicinity. And in connection with the same, the LIC had then written to the Goa bench of the Bombay High Court urging that the CCP discontinue with the dumping of waste which was creating a nuisance in the area. The letter by the LIC was then converted into a public interest litigation by the Goa bench of the Bombay High Court, following which the latter had directed the CCP not to dump garbage at Pato Plaza. Gajendra Radpoli, president of the LIC Employees Union, alleged on Tuesday that the CCP was attempting to once again dump garbage at the site. So called their anaerobic digester plant, which was here, which was costing about 80 lakhs, which is not functioning even, they have not functioned even for 24 hours. And now just because there is an opposition, opposition means it's a positive opposition because the children are facing, the tiny tots is facing the problem. Now again the CCP today has made an effort which we have stopped by cleaning this area and composting this because we are 
we are anticipating that because of EFI and the hoteliers have objected for non collection of the garbage, they are planning again to dump the garbage here in spite of we fighting in Honorable High Court. Was when Goa 365 contacted the mayor of the CCP, Tony Rodericks, he had this to say. Don't go away, we'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back, you're with Goa 365. The Bhumi Pujan of the site of the proposed Ravindra Bhavan at Baina was held on Wednesday by industrialist and ex-MLA Vasantra Joshi in the presence of the Chief Minister Digambar Kamath, the Revenue Minister Zuse Philip D'Souza, the Marmagao MLA Milind Naik, besides others. Speaking on the occasion, the Chief Minister Mr. Kamath said that his government would always strive to promote activities related to art and culture in the state. What they require is encouragement and a proper support. The support is the culture and cultural policy. We have to do a lot of work in the cultural and cultural policy. We have to do a lot of work in the cultural and cultural policy. We have to do a lot of work in the cultural and cultural policy. या वाइट प्रसंगक सुद्धा कलाकारा कोणामुकार नतमस्तक जावपा पडचे नाही म्हणून कलाकार कृतज्ञता निधी या सरकारान स्थापन केला आणि आज बऱ्याच आम्ही 70 कलाकारा काही कोणा 25000 काही 50000 असे पावळले असा मिस्टर कामत फर्दर सेड दैट पीपल वुड रियलाइज द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ डेव्हलपमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स ओनली वंस दे वर कंप्लीटेड रविंद्र भवन जातगिर मडगाव शहरात कशा पद्धतीने कला आणि संस्कृती क्षेत्रात वाव मेटा हे आज आमका कोणने आणि म्हणून वास्कोच्या या शहरात मला दिसत या प्रोजेक्टाची अत्यंत गरज आहे एक्स एमएलए वसंतराव जोशी स्टेटेड द नीड टू एनकरेज आर्टिस्ट्स इन द स्टेट वाइल प्रिजर्विंग द आर्ट एंड कल्चर ऑफ द स्टेट तुम्ही पुढे सल्ल्या त्यांना ही कला जी बांध दिपो नी अकेली बांधा जी मुक्ती करा द रेवेन्यू मिनिस्टर जोसे फिलिप डी सुजा सेड दैट द रविंद्र भवन वुड बेनिफिट द प्रेजेंट एज वेल एज द फ्यूचर जनरेशंस वो इन द रविंद्र भवन बानो ने काम मका ये कुछ और चिंता की या लोकल जाए बेनिफिट हंगा जा जरी तो रविंद्र भवन हि फेसिलिटी आज आई आज भूगतलीस्को The Vasco Murgaonsa Awaz on Tuesday accused the Revenue Minister and Vasco MLA Zuse Philip de Souza of attempting to conceal the proposal of the Shri Dev Damodar Trust to construct an auditorium at the said site. The VMA also condemned the Bhumi Pujan at the proposed Ravindra Bhavan site at Bainam. The decision of the so-called ministers or the MLAs to bring only Ravindra Bhavan at Bainam is totally wrong. unjustified and against the wishes of the people of Vasco and in Baina particulars because we the people of residents of Baina I am into confidence before putting a foundation stone at Baina Beach. Ravindra Bond Baina Ailer Amka tourism potential will be killed forever of that place. Addressing a press conference on Tuesday, the convener of the VMA, Andrew Alvarez, said that the decision of the government to construct the Ravindra Bhavan at Baina was unjustified as it did not have the consent of the locals. I will challenge him to make a comment on this. And uh, he is involved in this, with a big racket there, the big land scam there, that uh, should be exposed by all. See, otherwise, ask him some questions, we will answer them. Say, we ask him. Why, why, when, when, as if when government themselves give the land to the trust, and government themselves stop the construction of 115 to make it 850, and then uh, uh, like government must have one more. Who was building that first one? Who gave who, who gave the land to the to trust? Is the government? Carlos Almeida, member of the VMA, highlighted the land scam involving.